So we just looked at a basic CSS statement and it starts with the selector. So what the hell are selectors again? Let's say you're Brangelino and you have a bunch of kids, uh, you want to dress them for school except only one of them is old enough to go to school. Look at all these beautiful babies from all over the place. First you have to pick the right kid, the one that's old enough to go to school and then dress them or style them or prepare them for school. That's what selectors are. Choose which kid you want to prepare for school. Or since you're not Brangelina, uh, choose which element you want to style. It's the same concept. And it all starts with the selector. There are different kinds of selectors. In our example, in the last video, we use what's called an element selector because it targets your style based on the element type itself. That's the most basic selector there is by using the element type, like a P. Cool? The problem with element selectors is that you might not want to turn all your paragraphs blue. What if you had three paragraphs and you only want one of them to be blue? The element type is an identifier, but it, in this case, it's too general. I want to show you a real world example. Look at this on Adam's website. See these two sections? One of them has a white background. The other one is beige. If you inspect it, you'll see they're using divs for both of them. So clearly the guys that made this couldn't have said Oh, select all the divs and change the background to white or beige. They needed to be more specific. You can select elements based on other kinds of identifiers, classes and IDs. Class is the most common and useful one. In fact, that's exactly what Adam is using. Take another look. They have a wrapper class on one and a highlight on another one. If you click on the div with the highlight class on it, you'll see that the class actually has a style that includes background uh, beige. It's right there. So let's do one ourselves. Let's say you have four paragraphs and you want to alternate between dark and light. So dark, light, dark, light. In other words, you want to reuse a style for multiple elements. In this case, you can use a class selector. The way you write these in CSS is you write the name of your class. Uh, this could be whatever you want. Just you can have spaces and, and some special characters. Say dark and you put a dot in front of it. Why a dot? Well, I don't know what to tell you. It's just syntax and you just have to remember it. This tells the browser, hey, this is a class selector. And then of course you have to add that class to your HTML element as well. This means, hey, select all the elements that have a class attribute and the value is dark. So let's try it ourselves. Uh, so I have four paragraphs here. I've added dark, light, dark, light classes to them. So you can do the exact same thing that I have. Um, same thing as the last video. Uh, I have a styles.css file that I'm linking to. And if we take a look at that guy, I have two classes. I have a dark class and I have a light class. So the dark class has background color black and color, which is text color. You should know this by now, white. And the light um, selector or, or the styles for my light class are the exact opposite background color white and text color black. I also added a padding of 20 pixels to all P tags uh, just so you can see it a little bit easier. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to open this file and look at this. We're alternating between these two styles. Right. And what's so awesome about this is that you are reusing dark and light as much as you want. You can basically change any of them. You can change the second one to dark and that's now going to be dark. Right. Reusability, my friends. I'm also going to cover ID selectors, too, just for the sake of it. Although we don't use them that much. ID attributes are specific to one element only. If you have a style that you want to apply to only one element for some reason, you can add an ID to that element. For example, my blue paragraph then use an ID selector in CSS to style it. ID selectors are just like class selectors, except you put a hash in front of the name instead of the dot. I don't know how to explain it, it's just syntax. So that becomes the CSS selector for the element with that ID. Uh, let's try that one too real quick. I have an example here. So let's say I wanna leave all my paragraphs alone except one of them, I add a ID of my dash blue dash paragraph. Remember, you can't have uh, spaces uh, in there. Space actually means something, um, which we'll get to. 
so I have my blue paragraph and in my styles I have my blue paragraph should be blue and everybody else should be red. All right, so let's take a look at this guy now. Reveal and Finder. I'm gonna open it. See, the two paragraphs that don't have uh, any uh, classes or IDs on them are defaulting to red, but the first guy actually turns blue, right? So that's ID. The problem with ID is that it's limited to only one element. Remember, IDs can't be shared between elements. So you can't reuse my blue paragraph ID for multiple elements. So we try to stay away from them. They do have a purpose, but uh, not for us right now. So those are the three basic selectors, elements, class, and ID. Element to style the element of that type, ID to target only one specific element, and class to reuse for multiple elements. We'll be using all of them uh, from now on, but mostly classes. Selectors can get much, much more complicated, and they will, but uh, for now, you know the basics. So next, we're gonna look at some of the uh, options that we have when it comes to the style property. We've only been looking at color, I think. But later, we're gonna cover fonts, sizes, typography, backgrounds, borders, animation, display types, flexbox, where everybody goes talking.